Well, future or upcoming shareholder lawsuits against Kinko Bioworks only allege of embellishment. I think that this is relating to a lot of topics of discussion that many people have been speculating about as to whether if aspects of the gang of the business for Ginkgo Bioworks continue to be going south or at least continue to not be going as planned, whether they would have to resort to or whether the shareholders or any other type of people which have a financial stake in Ginkgo Bioworks would resort to additional lawsuits for being able to potentially seek compensation for their claims. And um, I just wanted to clarify, as even some people have asked it about me in with regards to if I have any type of investment in Ginkgo Bioworks, like in some of the comments in my videos, and I don't. I'm just very much an outsider who is familiar with synthetic biology and computational biology and a lot of the themes within biotech that Ginkgo Bioworks has been talking about and it very much reflects on a lot of my professional experience that I still like to talk and reflect on, especially within the agricultural space and you know food safety and so on. And I think the fact that um, there could be even more lawsuits for, in my opinion, for rather than just the embellishment of, rather than shareholders just claiming that Ginkgo Bio, the founders of Ginkgo Bioworks and people who had significant stock options in Ginkgo Bioworks uh, were uh, embellishing themselves because really to, let's be realistic, to get in a position for the, as the people in Ginkgo Bioworks were to actually be able to cash out more than $2 billion in stock compensation, which like an analyst has said on their call and he was laughing, which I agree with. It's a completely absurd large number for cashing out for a biotech company when in reality, they have never had any type of revenue that's close to 2 billion and I don't think they ever will, just objectively speaking. And I think that um, the fact that still, there could be some, there could be definitely some room for additional types of charges or additional types of allegations of misconduct because if you'd have to change the terms of agreement for your foundry, like how Jason has done and looking at a totally different type of business agreement, that can definitely rub people the wrong way because it's not only the complete opposite of the original investment hypothesis, but it's also really failing to be able to demonstrate that the whole foundry business model that the that the investors and many people had invested a lot of money in, into the first place is actually viable. On top of this, I think it demonstrates that at least for synthetic biology and how so many people had been saying for years that seminal prize, you know, seminal work from those Nobel Prize winners like Doudna and Charpentier could be scaled up and multiplexed. It's still obviously a bit of a way, a bit of a journey away because not only do you have to, when you're using some type of sophisticated CRISPR multiplex assay, you not only have to look at potential lower order off target effects, but there can also be interruptions to DNA replication and reverse transcription, like how I've talked about in my presentations on binding selectivity of CRISPR-Cas nucleases. And that's just even from the perspective of working in a synthetic biology lab from my master's in statistics at Cornell. It wasn't necessarily how um, this lab in the applied and engineering physics department was really looking to find novel uh, therapeutic applications of CRISPR because it's very much an extremely obvious observation that anyone can have and that um, I f still feel like the synthetic biology industry um, may not be able to thoroughly address or systematically address for a long time. And, um, and you know, given the fact that Jason Kelly has been trying to almost go in like, you know, you know, trying to like save his company from going into a complete crisis with this, with these mass layoffs, that, with this mass layoff that he's been doing that, who knows, it could actually end up being even something worse than that. Um, I think that we just really have to keep an eye on his actions and how different comments that he has changed have have been, you know, manipulated or have changed over time. Because unfortunately, I really do have to kind of empathize and in some pretty much many perspectives completely agree with the shareholders lawsuit that's, that is brought against them that is alleging about embellishment. Because again, just more than two billion to deliver on a type of on this type of business with the foundry, it just doesn't really seem like their foundry will ever be able to actually deliver on the types of commercial goals and promises that they've been saying for a while.